We have a theist friend calling us from Turkey. Uh, Ahmad in Syria. Thank you for waiting. You're on with Shannon and Matt. Hey, Ahmad. Yeah, thank you very much. What, what, what was it you wanted to talk about? Uh, slavery in Islam. I basically put the topic of the question, slavery in Islam is perfectly logical. What? Well, uh, so, all right. I want to make sure we're, we're clear here, so I'm going to let you go off. Now, I have no expertise in the Quran, but what do you mean that slavery in Islam is logical? Yeah, okay, I'm going to explain it. But uh, uh, okay. before I present my argument, I just uh, I just need you like, uh, you know, I, I acknowledge that my argument is only based a particular understanding of Islam, you know, you know, it's it's a new understanding, but but it's an acceptable understanding, and, it, and it's gaining ground between Muslims, you know. So okay. what well, I mean I'm, by that is, I'm is not going to hold you. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm not going to hold you responsible for what you say. I'm I'm not going to go up to other Muslims and say, ah, well, this other guy said no, this. No, 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 no. Just no, no. It's just it's a school of thought, you know. But it's a new school of thought. But it's a school of thought, you know. I I just need you to get to the point. In yes, yes, I'm going uh, So, this new school of thought, like, uh, it doesn't allow to to attack someone, to make a war only in defense. With that being said, here, here, the uh, my argument is based on this: since Islam is doesn't allow you to make war, you know, only in defense. So, if someone attacks a Muslim particular state, if there would be like this Muslim state, in that case, you're allowed to take the prisoners as slaves as a punishment. Oh, okay. I just want to, I, I, before we keep going, I want to make sure that I'm understanding your argument. I'm going to, I'm going to reword it and tell me if I'm right. And then we can go from there. Because in Islam, you're not allowed, or at least in your understanding of Islam, yeah. you are not allowed to make wars. The only way uh, you would be in a war is if you were defending yourself. And because you're defending yourself, therefore, somehow, several logical leaps, it is now, it, it's okay to take prisoners of war and keep them as slaves because that is deemed somehow an acceptable punishment. It's actually so yes, in, in as a punishment so hang that, on so that hang others on. Hang would on. Not attack you in the future. Hang okay. on. Sura yeah. thirty three fifty, right? Yeah. You're familiar with it, which is what says essentially that um made lawful unto thee the wives and those who had had paid had passed paid their dowries or who has paid their dowries and those wh whom thy right hand possesseth possesses wow possesseth uh, of those yes. whom Allah hath given thee as spoils of war so you think that when a war happens God gives or Allah gives you the winner uh the people who survived the war to be your slaves Yes, like I said, so that others in the future would not dare to attack the this Muslim state. So you're not it's like not a punishment. Occurring. Okay, so I understand your argument. That's not what I asked, but okay. <laughs> so you're saying it's a deterrent then. That's what you're saying. That, so exactly. it's, let's follow through your logic then. The, like, you don't think it's a deterrent that you, you wiped out a good portion of the people in that and it's going to take them a while to build and maybe there's some diplomacy there? I mean... We, we have learned a lot. It's one thing to say, we, have, we know better ways to treat prisoners of war and the survivors of war, and we know how this impacts society. But when you say that it's logical within Islam, like, I don't give a fuck what Allah or Muhammad or anybody else had to say about whether or not you can own people. I'm talking about whether or not it's morally right, not whether it's consistent with what the Quran says, because the Quran's just a stack of papers that nobody should give a fuck about. It's essentially like might makes right is what you're saying. You're saying the people attacked us. Like, I'm just going to steel man your argument as best I can, because it still doesn't make sense to me. You're saying they, in, in your scenario that you created, they attacked us. So as, in a way, 
in order to punish them and act as a deterrent, it's okay to keep slaves. That, A, it doesn't make sense because for, now you're going to have to prove that somehow keeping slaves will act as a deterrent because psychologically, I would assume that another society, if you keep a whole heaping horde of them as slaves, are probably going to be agitated that you're keeping their brothers and sisters and mothers and daughters and fathers and sons and uh, as slaves, that's not going to act as a deterrent. That would be an agitation agent. So that, that doesn't make a lot of logical sense to me. And on top of that, you still don't have any moral justification. And it, like, we're, I don't even know where you get to the point that it's logical. Your moral justification is they made us mad so we can do whatever we want. No, no, no. But like, it's like, you know, killing in general, it's wrong. But if you do right. it in self-defense, it's perfectly acceptable. acceptable How does one keep a slave in self-defense? Provide your moral justification for the argument you're actually making. As a deterrent. Well, they came and they attacked us. So we can keep slaves. Like, where do you get what? That's a big logical oh, no. leap. They came and they attacked us. Thus, we can do whatever we want. We no longer have to adhere to any specific moral, like we don't have to have a, a robust moral structure because whatever we de what, whatever we deem acceptable as some sort of retributive justice is okay, just because we said so. No, it's not just because we said so. It's a deterrent. It provides some justification so because nation, acting as a deterrent isn't a justification, and they, they started it isn't a justification for whole, for keeping slaves. And those are the two that you've provided thus far. Provide an additional one because those aren't sound. No, it is sound. No, it's not. Like I said, but no, like as a deterrent, so that other nations will know that if you, if they attack this particular Islamic state, and you'll keep them as slaves. So you think that that'll be no, a deterrent? Yeah. And I've already provided you an explanation maybe, of why that isn't maybe it will, an effective deterrent. Maybe it will encourage several people to join together to completely wipe your backwards ass ideas off the face of the map. That's why we have things like the United Nations. That's why we have things like allies and diplomacy and agreements to work with other nations. So that when backward ass people like you suggest that if somebody attacks them, they just get to be your slaves if you happen to win, well, we can just expunge the planet of immoral things like that. I don't care whether or not you think it's logical. Your book is immoral, your God is immoral, your view is immoral. You're sanctioning owning people as property. Why would I care if it's consistent? You know what else is logical? Some of Harry Potter is consistent too, but that doesn't mean I have to follow it or like it or agree with it. Right. Going around punching people in the face as a deterrent does like it, it it's not that it doesn't make sense. Oh. You're acting as a bully and you're harming people. Yeah. People are going to take umbrage with that. The point here. Somebody's missing the point here. Oh, and I'm, it's common. I'm saying in general, I'm saying, I'm saying, what? I'm saying, well, we were discussing who missed the point, and it was you, but go ahead. I'm saying, if if you're the attacker, you know, it's the same like killing, you know, in general, the killing no. is wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, Ahmad, but you don't get to simplify war to just the attacker. Very few times has anything that has ever resulted in a war been so simple as to say, these people blatantly attacked us with no provocation. Things are a little more complicated like that. And considering what uh, imams have been teaching people and the, the amount of violence uh, pushed forward and advocated by followers of Islam around the globe, not all of them, but a good portion of them, um, I don't think that there's a reason to think that you have a good leg to stand on with regard to being attacked. However, do you not understand that throughout our history with war, we have learned that there are better ways to treat the survivors of war than to make them your slaves. Because human de the, the basic human rights of autonomy and, and the ability to control and govern your life lead to a better world. And so once you've wiped out all the men of fighting age, to put it in biblical and Quranic terms, uh, what's left? Why are you worried about the leftovers coming back to kill you? They can't muster an army for quite a long time. No, 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 not not all men, and I'm not saying this punishment uh, will go to the attacking state. No, not just the people that came to attack us. You understand? Just, the, just the actual. I understand. I I'm not an idiot. I'm telling you that is fucking immoral too. 
I'm sorry that you're so backward. I'm sorry that you don't understand that we have we have we've learned better ways to deal with people than than what you're suggesting. Your, your religion, your God, your holy book is abominable and has poisoned your mind to the point where you are now making excuses for backward ass antiquated ideas about making people slaves because they attacked you. There are other options, right? Yeah, you were at a point in your life right now where you felt it necessary to call two people and talk to them about what circumstance would be okay to own another human being. Yeah, like that's that. that is where you are in life right now. 